Hey, this is Mark Turay. I'm talking with DMV Access about my new song, Dear America, featuring Allison Blanc, and I hope it speaks to you. Hey, what is going on? How'd you let yourself end up this far gone? Maybe because from the start, the nation was taken, the indigenous race and left them for... Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Nate from DMV Access. I'm here for a second interview with Mark Turay. How you doing, man? Hey, what's going on, man? Thank you again for, for having me back on. I appreciate it. Dude, it's great to have you back, man. Like, the last interview went pretty well, and, you know... We're going to pick things up from where we t um, ended the last interview because you let us know, you know, that a new um, a new song is on the way and, you know, it's finally here. You know, if you, you, you know, have a new single right now that we're going to promote. So just let us know a little bit about it, man. Yeah, I mean, my, my new song is uh, entitled Dear America and um, it's produced by Godfather and uh, recorded at uh, District Sound Lab. And um, it's really, I think it's a, it's a powerful record, um, which I'm hoping will further the, um, the platform that I've built of hip-hop activism with my song 1915, um, but instead of this time looking through the scope of genocide um, through the Armenian perspective, really right. aiming that and looking at uh, America's history of genocide, slavery, and oppression, and how a lot of that is still going on to this very day here in 2020. All right, man. Okay, let, let, you know, let's just take it from the top. Let's let's take it from, uh, you know, how you got the idea for, like, you know, like the moment you uh, thought of creating this track. You know, just tell tell how it all came together. Well, I um I I've always wanted to to write a track, um, to write a song that that really talks about relevant things happening here in America. And after the success of uh, my song 1915 and that being used in a bunch of schools and really sort of allowing me to, to be on the platform and speak at rallies and, you know, perform this song on a, on, on a bigger um, pedestal, um, I've, I felt, you know, especially with everything going on here in America, um, there's so much that needs to be talked about. And, and hip-hop being a great tool as a way to educate and empower, I wanted to use my platform uh, to shed some light on that. Um, so the song really touches on, you know, everything going back from America's inception, um, you know, all the way up until now, and how a lot of these issues that happened, you know, three or four hundred years ago are still going on today because America has has not really reckoned with its past in a lot of ways and um, has sort of perpetuated these issues. Right, right. Wow, well, it's cool, man. It's cool that you're actually, you know, you know, cr making music, you know, based on like actual, you know, important, you know, I guess, like, topics that are going on right now. Um, you know, I was just curious, like, were there any, um, you know, coming up, were there any artists, like, in, well, I know you have a bunch of musical influences, but, like, were there any, like, specific artists that, like, made you, um, I guess, uh, want to focus on, you know, making music, uh, focusing on important topics? Um, yeah. So, I mean, I, I was big on listening to, like, uh, Public Enemy a lot when I was, um, you know, when I was growing up. Um, but actually, when, I, you know, in a lot of ways, I think I credit that to, to listening to Rage Against the Machine and mm -hmm. um, Zach De La Rocha's sort of delivery on a lot of issues. I mean, I think that... Um, there's so much there, you know, even though they, they made a lot of their stuff in the 90s, it's still so relevant. Um, and it's like, it, it, could, it could have been written yesterday, and it, you think it would apply to issues that are still going on now. Um, so that's, that, I think, is in a lot of ways um, a driving point for, for making me want to write about this topic, um, sort of uh, about, you know, criticizing and, you know, um, talking about America's society um, and, and how the racial sort of divide is, is happening here. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, man, that's cool. Yeah, it's like when you said Rage Against the Machine, I was just like, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because, cause, you know, that's pretty much what their music was based on, right? I wasn't a huge Rage Against the Machine fan, but um, from the songs that I've heard, it, it sounds like, you know, they, they they touched upon, like, a lot of, you know, important um, events. Oh, for sure. You know, gotcha, gotcha. You know, it's cool that you're doing this because, you know, we hear a lot of people talk about... Um, oh, hip hop! Every artist talks about the same things as drug, sex, money. But you know, like when you go like really like deep into it, like there there there's some artists that are, you know, making music based on a lot of important things. But I guess you just gotta find them, you know. Yeah. No, I mean I think that's that's how hip hop was, you know, in its in its inception. 
And I mean, it's crazy. I mean, we're doing this interview right now on on the anniversary of the, the hip hop's birthday, you know, um, you know. But it's like that's that's uh that's how it was, you know. It was a, it was a tool to to spread awareness, you know, because back in the day it was like the news, you know, wasn't reporting about certain issues. And a lot of sense that's still not happening. But this was a way to sort of get on the mainstream and relay things to educate and empower and sort of make a difference, you know, educate the next generation that's going to come forward. Um, so that's where, like, NWA, Public Enemy, you know, a lot of these, you know, original sort of, you know, groups and rappers, you know, was really about. And I think that's still sort of very prevalent and present. You know, it's just more on the underground now. I think the top 40 sort of, you know, sort of gets the same sort of vibe like you were, what you were talking about. You're not going to listen to the radio and hear a lot of education and empowerment sort of stuff right now. But, um, right. you know, it's definitely still still around on the underground. You just kind of got to know where to listen to and what channels to tune into. Gotcha, gotcha. Like I, I, th- I think it was um, really interesting how you pointed out that we're not going to, you know, switch on the radio and hear these, um, you know, many songs about these important topics. But do you think that that it, that it, there needs to be a change, or do you think it's it's just, um, you know, everything's where where it's supposed to be right now? I mean, I think hip hop is an evolving art form, just like any other genre. Um, and I think, I think what's one of those things where, you know, to an extent you are hearing more of it come back around. I think a lot of sort of channels, you know, are making sort of playlists. Like there's, um, there's a playlist on Sirius XM called Black Music Matters where it basically sort of puts together all these different songs from different, you know, artists talking about, you know, police brutality, real rel- relative, um, sort of issues, you know, that are very important, you know, nowadays, um, and sort of giving them their proper shine both from underground and, you know, big name artists. But, um, you know, I think even, you know, sometimes on, on the more, on the more big scale, like you will see some artists like IDK, who's a great rapper, um, from the, from, um, from the DC area. He, uh, did his debut on TV at the late show for Stephen Colbert. And he, he did a song of his, which is very powerful talking about a lot of this. So you, you are sort of seeing some of it come out, you know, and, and even though they might be using some of the more popular styles right now, sort of the, you know, the sort of the mumble rap, sort of, um, sort of trap, sort of deliveries. Right. But, you know, you are seeing some of that, um, sort of education and empowerment sort of work its way into that current sort of style that is popular, um, here and there. You know, I'm not going to say it's all the time, but, you know, you still see it sort of creeping in a bit. Got it, got it. So let's talk about the new track a little bit more. Um, let's, let's talk about, you know, like the, the writing process, the recording process. Can you let us know a little bit about that? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, so this song, um, I wanted this to be very similar to um, my song 1915 in terms of the style. My song 1915 is is a very sort of hysteric, historical sort of account, you know, of the Armenian genocide and how that, you know, um, sort of the Ottoman Empire sort of essentially not being held accountable, that sort of um, fed um, and drew, and Hitler drew inspiration from that to commit the Holocaust. So it's sort of, you know, a message of if you allow a genocide to happen unchecked, you know, that will essentially, um, you know, fuel the fire for other potential perpetrators uh, and it'll lead to another. Um, and that's sort of that, you know, it has a lot of emotion to it, but it's also a very historical sort of this happened and then this happened and then this happened because of that. So it's it's a perfect segue to being used in a school curriculum as a way to educate. Um, and it being a hip hop song and a, and a medium that kids can gravitate towards and identify with, you know, it has a, a very potential, you know, power to resonate with them. Um, so mm-hmm. I wanted this song to have the same sort of effect. So, um, the first verse, I spent a lot of time talking about America's history, talking about, you know, it being founded, taken from the indigenous people, basically through a genocide and stolen lands, broken treaties. Then, you know, the, the import of slavery, you know, and how the, the country was really built off of stolen lands and off of um, off of slaves and the cruelty along with that. Ron walks the listener all the way up until the Civil Rights era and how people, you know, even though the Civil War happened, you know, the, the South really wasn't held accountable. They were kind of left to their own devices and Jim Crow and things like that. So even 100 years later, you know, until 1960, you know, it's like really that's when things are starting to really, you know, move around and change. Um, so, and then the second verse, I spent a lot of time talking about how everything 
is still really present right now under this current administration. A lot of these, you know, perpetual sort of um, hatreds and racism um, is still happening to this day, just under a different guise. Gotcha, gotcha. I like how you pointed out that, you know, this country is based on, I mean, like, um, it, I guess it just wasn't a peaceful process. Like, when I was in second grade, I remember they had, uh, like, around Thanksgiving, they had half of the second graders uh, dressed, dressed up as pilgrims and then the other half as Indians. And now looking yeah. back, now that I know what actually went on, it's like, wait, they didn't teach me this. Um, yeah. Do you think do you think we need to like um like we need to be the kids need to be people people in general need to be educated a little bit better? Oh, for sure. And I think a lot of that is like what the the victors of of battles and of wars write get to write the history books. And you know, so white people took this nation. They got the you know you know and it, you won't find them sort of voluntarily sort of writing about their misdeeds. So I think that's one of the things where that sort of trickles down into pop culture and school curriculums. I mean, you look at the movie Pocahontas, that was released in, what, 1993? The end of the climax yeah. of the movie basically ends on a good note where there's the bad villain, he's sort of defeated, you know, people, the townspeople who came with him off the ship sort of realize, you know, the Indian, you know, the Native Americans have, you know, a lot of value and it's all good. And then he gets sort of sent back off on a ship back to England, and that's the end. But in reality, it's like, no, that's not the end. It's like they yeah. came back and forth and took the land, and it was a mass genocide and everything. So it's, it's kind of one of those things where it's a fine line because you want to tell a story, but you also don't want to, like, fabricate it and lead this, you know, next generation of kids growing up thinking that it was all hunky-dory when really there was a huge amount of suffering and pain which is something that I think, unfortunately, has been normalized in a lot of the history books and the pop culture and the mm-hmm. medium. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally ag- agree. Because all these years, like when I was a kid, uh, I was thinking, okay, so the pilgrims met with the Indians, and the Indians just had them, you know, feel like at home, like like they were just hosting them. And I was like, oh, nice. So that's, I, I was thinking it was, a, it was a peaceful process. Now that I'm a lot older, I'm just like, wow, wow. Yeah. You see, you see how things really are. Gotcha. Yeah. So, like, what do you want people to take away from the new track? If they can take anything away, like, what do you, what do you, what do you want the main message to be? I think the main thing that I really want to take away is that it's not too late um, to make amends for your past. And that's sort of addressed sort of as America as a whole, not to any one specific person or race or creed. I think America as a country has had trouble grappling with its past and reckoning with it. And that, in a sense, has sort of got them in this perpetual limbo where things haven't really changed. Things have changed, but they've really just gone under the different, a different guise, essentially, and the same hate underlying issues has gone on. Much like my song 1915, is about the Ottoman Empire, now modern-day Turkey, reckoning with its past and acknowledging this crime, the Armenian genocide, and, and finding a path to move forward. America still hasn't reckoned with its past. So this is, I'm hoping that this will be sort of, people can listen to it and, and understand that America needs to reckon with its past in order to move forward and be a, a really successful contributing member to the rest of the world. Um, and, you know, everyone's going to have their own takeaway from that, depending on who you are and what your background is and, you know, but I think that's something where um, I just want to further the conversation and help educate and empower. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. Well, I'm, like, really excited to, you know, check out the track. Do we have a music video on the way, too? Yes, yes. We have a, a full-length music video. And just like um, um, following the lead of 1915, this is all historical footage and news footage of current events. So uh, I'm not in the video at all. This is you know, very much like a historical presentation of images and things that I'm talking about. Visually, you'll see them as well. Very cool. And where do, when does that drop? So the song and the music video are dropping this Saturday. This Saturday. All right, cool, cool. So we'll be sure to promote that on, you know, DMV Access social media and and the blog. Um, yeah, man, that's, that's awesome. And then just, you know, before we wrap it up, you know, I just, we didn't really get to do this last time. Like, let's just get to know Mark Touré, you know, as a, you know, behind that, be like behind the scenes. Like, like, what are you into, man? Like, what else do you do besides music? Well, man, um, you know, I, I work as a, as a therapist for, for special needs kids. You know, when I'm not doing the music, I'm sort of paying the bills for, 
for studio time and furthering, um, you know, new albums and stuff. Um, awesome. But, you know, from, yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate it. You know, it's one of those things where it's, it's fun and rewarding and, uh, you know, it's, it feels good to, you know, that you're kind of helping people and making a difference a bit. Um, and then for fun, I, I don't know, I like uh, I like mountain biking. Um, big into video games. I've been playing Red Dead Redemption and uh, I'm about to get on The Last of Us sort of vibing out very timely with the quarantine and everything. I'm about to play these two sort of dystopian um, games. But um, other than that, man, um, you know, just hiking, staying active, you know, chilling the bed. Good, good. Do you miss performing? I do, man. I really, really do. Um, that's one of the things where I think universally, if you ask any musician, what, no matter what genre they are, if you're a true artist, you're going to miss that energy and that instant mm-hmm. feedback because there's nothing like writing a song or having something put together and performing it and right away getting that, that gratification of knowing that people rock with it or whatnot. Or, or if not, if it needs work, you know right away. Whereas now it's like a lot of our artists are kind of like shooting blind with their ideas and their creativity because it's like, you know, having that instant feedback from your fans is so important. But, um, you know, I'm working to sort of build up my home studio and do some more live streaming stuff. Um, cool. So sort of filling the gaps here and there. Cool, cool. You know, maybe we'll have like a DMV access, you know, live stream concert eventually. You know what I mean? We'll definitely hit you That'd up That'd be that. dope, man. That'd I'd definitely be on board cool. for that. Yeah, man. I, I definitely, I, I guess I haven't thought of it much lately, but, you know, with all the artists that we're working with, you know, like we, we see them in the interviews, we hear their music, we see their music videos, but there's that, there's just something about performances that you just don't get anywhere else. It's, it's, it, you know, like when you're just lo- there, like I'm, I'm talking about live performance, like when you're just sure. there and you get to see how they put on a show, how they put together, how they present themselves. It's just, it's like that's the best way to really understand an artist. For me personally, yep. just to really understand an artist, what they're about, I feel like that's the best way to get to know an artist, you know. I, I've been to so many shows, and I'll see the openers who I've never heard of, and then just from their 30-minute set, 30 to an hour minute set, um, I could go home a fan, you know. I, I've, been, yeah. I've become a fan of so many artists just from just, just from that, just seeing them live and being like, okay, I've heard this song before, but once I saw it live, you know, it is different. I had one artist that uh that had that impact on me was uh MGK Machine Gun Kelly mm-hmm. from two thousand and twelve for the first time. And I was just like, Yeah, I, I knew his wild boy song. I was like, All right, it's 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 whatever but when I saw him live I was like, Oh my god, this guy's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big fan of MGK, just, just the energy, you know. But yeah, man, besides from the the track right now, like, you know, what should we be expecting from you? you know, in the future? Um, well, definitely, you know, I have a, uh, you know, um, you know, the song and the music video for Dear America are coming out this Saturday. Other than that, um, got a few uh, dope records I'm working on with another uh, couple cool artists, um, which you can expect, you know, sometime in the, in the not too distant future. Um, right now, I'm sort of, you know, dealing with um, finding uh, some nice spaces to record and, and get them all put together. Um, other than that, you know, probably some more live streaming sort of stuff um, in the not too distant future as well. Um, but yeah, just you know, working, you know, putting out some more music for y'all. Um, but um, and then definitely some more, you know, sort of coverage and and um, getting Dear America, you know, hopefully um, out there as much as we can. Sounds good, man. Sounds good. You know, anything you like? Just like to say to um, all the, all the fans, supporters. I I appreciate each and every one of you, and it's one of those things where you know every right now everyone is sort of going through their moment, you know, with this with this current you know sort of crisis. And I just you know just stay stay strong, you know, be nice to everyone else because you don't know what out what everyone else is going through right now. So it's like a little bit of nice can go a long way, make someone's day. Awesome, man! I really appreciate you doing this interview with us again. No worries, man. Thank you guys for having me on. Appreciate it. Yeah.